Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Entrepreneur's Mind where we focus on the young entrepreneurs, the success story even of the older entrepreneurs who have made it in the business industry. So today we are going to meet up with our one Mr. Robert who is uh, in charge of uh, the, the Bob's Fireplaces and I hope you enjoy the show today. Join me. Founded in 2015, the Bob's Fireplaces kicked off with the notion that space heating in the urban household needs to advance beyond the common use of wood to fuel space heating within the household. Today we engage Mr. Robert Kimani, the CEO of Bob's Fireplaces, to know more about the market. Okay, my name is Robert Kimani and um, I am one of the founders of Bob's Fireplaces. And Bob's Fireplaces actually started off as a means to solve a personal problem. Um, I've got a very beautiful fireplace in my house and it is a wood burning fireplace. And I had a situation where I purchased wet wood um, about um, four years ago and I smoked my family out of the house twice. And because of smoking them out, it was then very simple. I got an ultimatum from the family. It was either the fireplace or me and so I had to choose and out of that then was born this dream to quickly figure out a way of solving um, the need to heat the space and we initially started off with what you can see behind us um, which is basically the electric fireplaces. It initially like I said started off with a personal challenge and as soon as I got one and then I had friends coming in they would admire it and then they also wanted to find out if they could get similar solutions for themselves. And you then get a situation where you solve one person's challenge, then you solve another. And it quickly becomes apparent that there's a need in the market. Um, the beauty about this is the fact that for anybody that wants space heating, you then are not, if you're not burning firewood, it means you don't have any ash. Um, you're not dealing with challenges from carbon monoxide. And as I'm sure we all know, um, we've all lost a friend or two who had a cold space, decided to put on a jiko in the house and just never woke up. So that's actually where this whole story starts. The young industry in the country seems to be picking up well with developers putting up better ways of adding value in the industry. The first was to understand what the market potential was and the market potential was obviously there. Um, it was apparent because we got requests from people who had seen one in the house who then wanted to find out whether they could get one of their own. Uh, beyond that is um, the fact that as an economy and as a people we are getting to the point where people want to move away from first of all burning firewood, um, simply because we are cutting trees. But then the biggest part I think is the fact that we've all gotten to this age where we are very sensitive about our environment. And so everybody is becoming environmentally friendly. We've come from situations where we just burned paper bags the other day. And so people want solutions that are eco-friendly. And so this is a very, very eco-friendly solution. Being a new business, it has its challenges in terms of developers wanting to adapt, not wanting to be seen to be guinea pigs. I'm sure nobody ever wants to be a guinea pig in anything. So a lot of the developers obviously want to make sure that it has been tried, it's been tested, it works. Um, and then beyond that is the fact that as developers build, these are usually some of the things they have not put into consideration. And so it tends to be a bit of an addition to their construction budget. But those are challenges we are quickly surmounting because as we have more conversations with developers, a lot of them are beginning to see the value. This would obviously add value to any property. And so the moment they see that, they are then quick to adapt. 
Marketing is considered as one of the best ways that every business uses to pursue their clients. Typically, it's engaging with the market. Um, we have used a lot of social media for that. Um, we engage with our clients typically on our Facebook, Instagram pages. We've got a bit of, of um, LinkedIn as well. Uh, but most importantly, and for conversations like this, typically with developers, you need to have a front-facing conversation, which means um, we have to be foot soldiers. So we will tend to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with our clients just to make sure that they understand what we are doing and what the value would be to them. Uh, but most importantly, I think, is the fact that as a young business, we constantly have to keep abreast with new technologies. And so we are constantly reading, we are constantly researching, we are constantly looking for new ways to do what we are doing. And as we do that also, we make sure that we are again constantly getting feedback from the market, getting feedback from the clients we have worked with to make sure that they are giving us feedbacks so that we can improve ourselves as a business and deliver. If you're in business and you do not have an unsatisfied client, um, I would say you're probably doing the wrong thing. Um, and unsatisfied clients provide several opportunities. One is they give you the opportunity to make sure that you have gone back and met their need. Typically what I have seen from experience, and this is across quite a number of years, is the fact that if you can turn that unsatisfied client by actually meeting his need, it could be something small that you didn't do, or it could be that your unit cannot do a certain, or your solution does not meet a certain need. But if from the get-go, you are upfront and you tell them what you can and cannot do, and or if it's something that you could have done, you go the extra mile and make sure that you have met their need. Chances are you then turn them into what I consider a disciple. And this is the kind of person who will sing praises about you because you met them at their point of dissatisfaction. You met that need. And the fact that you went that extra mile, for you they will I mean, for them, you will always be that person that they can call upon because they know that you will go the extra mile and solve their problem and they will tell their friends about you. And so it's an opportunity to grow your business um, even with that unsatisfied client. It happens to all of us. So all our products are EU spec, um, CE certified, which means they've got or they have met the standards of the European market. Um, what you're just seeing is a small fraction of what we do. Uh, because beyond just providing the electric fireplaces, we also do gas fireplaces as well. In fact, this is just some of the plumbing that we use for our gas fireplaces. So our clients have the option to have an electric or a living flame. Uh, beyond that, we've got solutions that cater to any kind of situation. You can have your traditional fireplace, which we can retrofit. We can put in what is called an insert. This will actually go into a recess or hole in the wall where you've got your traditional fireplace. If you've got an apartment situation where you've got a blank wall, so starting off on what is considered a clean slate, we've got what we call full suits. Now full suits come in with a fireplace itself and then they also come in with the entire surround, which means this is a solution you quickly come and plug against a blank wall so we can meet any diverse need. Um, very briefly, when I think about this as a business, is we can cater to any client's unique need. Mr. Robert talks to us on how fireplaces industry has not been tapped in so far despite the potential in the recent times. Um, I would say the market is still very young. It has got a lot of potential. Um, if you think about it, and I'm sure even as you visit your friends, you will notice that not a lot of them have got solutions like this, which means the potential for us to go out and really serve the market um, is completely untapped. That said, um, even with our gas solutions, first of all, when you think about gas and LPG, um, beyond the fact that we can plumb it to the fireplace, we can still plumb it to the kitchen. And gas has always been positioned as an elitist 
uh, product. That's why you have to buy it by the cylinder. It's 2,300 bob for 13 kilograms. And gas has only served about 10% of this market. So there's still 90% of the market untapped out there. And so it doesn't matter how many players we are. I think it will take a very, very long time for us to completely deal with the market in the entirety. So it's a ripe opportunity for anybody that's thinking about it. Um, and like I always say, where there's competition, it means that you're always on top of your toes. Um, I've not come across anybody that does exactly what we do, but I'm sure they will pop up. Um, and it's really about them identifying pockets of opportunity that they can address. So we've been doing this for the last um, close to five years now just under five years and we basically are the pioneers in this space as far as i've seen i know people have brought in units from abroad after having seen them a lot of people tend to engage with this um, on uh, electronic media so they've seen a fireplace in a movie and a lot of them will then think about it from a cost perspective they will go and typically get something that's more pocket friendly for them and after a few months, they then have a situation where it either doesn't work or it has a small problem and they have nobody to solve it. Moving higher and higher and making achievements is what most businesses aim for. As it is said, success doesn't just find you. I think um, the first is the fact that we've been involved with a developer's market that we have educated and who have become more receptive to what we do. Um, two is we've worked with some relatively interesting and nice projects, some of them large. Um, three is the fact that um, we have pivoted the business. So initially we started off doing electric fireplaces and then we moved over to the living flame where we did gas fireplaces. And as we did gas fireplaces, what then happened was we would design the gas fireplace, install it for the client, and then they would ask the question, so how do I get gas to the fireplace? And so we started getting into plumbing. Um, typically, plumbing for gas has been done in copper. What we've got here is an interesting solution. This is an aluminum pipe that is sheathed. It is multi-layered, very flexible comes in 100 meter runs, which means unlike any of the other solutions that's available, you can plumb this from 100 meters away and deliver it to your kitchen as a last mile solution. So the beauty about this is that, like I said, like your typical electric um, meter, is you never have to think about ever buying gas by the cylinder again. Now what that means is, one, you don't have to invest in that inventory. And two, you never have to hold 2,300 bob at any point in time because you have to think about running to the petrol station to get a cylinder. So whatever amount you have, that's what you top up. So it's just connected to um, a smart, U smart GSM transponder. And yeah, it's just one small step uh, for Bob's fireplaces, but we believe that this will be where everything is going. Um, as an economy again, we've quickly adapted and moved smart everything. So whether it's um, getting your shopping, um, whether it's doing your banking, so why not get it to the point where it's just purchasing your gas based on what you have in the pocket. For the young entrepreneurs in the market, for anybody who is basically getting into business, the first thing I always tell them is to understand why they know. Understand whether the know is an opportunity for doing business later, um, which means you can then prepare yourself to have that conversation. Um, second is obviously a matter of patience. Like I talked about the fact that the economy has not been what it's supposed to be across the last two or so years, um, which means that there might have been opportunities that were presented to you and you knew that things were going to happen, but they did not happen according to plan. The third and I think the most important thing is none of us is an encyclopedia of knowledge. There's what I consider the wisdom of the crowd. So it is always important to have, whether it is friends you hold in high esteem or regard, 
who have either been in business or who have been in uh, positions of influence who are then there to guide you. It could be on a day-to-day -day basis, people you can basically pose questions to with respect to what the situation is, what you think the potential is um, for you as a business person, where you think they might have or they might be able to open opportunities. Again, um, you know, we come from a society that was um, that was very big on growing the individual holistically. Um, we in Swahili we say kidole kimoja kiwi chao, which means the child belong to the society, and therefore you then can lean on these same friends as well. They could open opportunities for you elsewhere. With the industry gradually gaining its momentum. How can we count on fireplaces industry in the future? The future of fireplaces, for my opinion, is um, it is extremely bright. And the reason I say it is very bright is it is said that to look at where you're going, you have to look at your past. Now, here's the most interesting bit. We will all go back to our fireplaces, especially the moment we see that we can get access to them. Um, for one very simple, which is a simple reason, which is the fact that culturally we have developed our African society around the fire. If you remember, we passed to tradition around the fire. Culture was passed around the fire. Women educated the girl child in the hut as they cooked. The men educated the boy child as they enjoyed their fire and did their meat roasting or whatever it is outside. And so, because of that cultural aspect, which has been lost, a lot of people are then thinking about this because fire is a very calming effect. And we've actually had installations where we do what somebody calls their feature wall, which has got nothing else but just that nice long fireplace. They are making a statement. It's a place where they want to go and relax. And that relaxing, calming place is where you tend to have a lot of those interesting conversations. So that education will probably, in my opinion, begin to come back as you sit around. One scholar once said, starting your own business is like planting a sapling. First, you have to invest your time and money then take care of it while expecting nothing in return. But when your startup blossoms, it makes all the patience and hard work worthwhile. For the entrepreneur's mind, I am Timothy Zawadi.